So hi, Tamara. Uh, thank you for uh, accepting to do this interview, to uh, volunteer for that. Uh, you grow your carnivorous plants, your Nepenthes, on your windowsill. And uh, please introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for inviting me to share my plants with everyone. I'm really excited to chat with you and share all of my plants. I've, uh, I'm living right now in Quebec and I've just recently moved here from Toronto. Uh, so my plants are in a bit of a transition zone, um, mm -hmm. as am I, of course, but <laughs> we're doing the best that we can and we're, we're slowly adapting so you can see some of them behind me here huh. and i'm very excited to share them with you and all of your viewers thank, thank you so you. much for having me my pleasure how long have you been growing uh nimpentes on your windowsill or carnivorous plants on your windowsill before moving to montreal i mean yeah so i i started growing carnivorous plants probably about 10 years ago but i only started collecting them more seriously probably within the last four or five years or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I had started off when I lived in Winnipeg, actually, <laughs> and I was growing on the windowsill there. Um, mm -hmm. And that was that was a very different experience than growing here, I will say, a uh, lot colder. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, <Sure. yeah. laughs> it was perfect for the Venus flytrap because they get their dormancy built in, but for everyone mm -hmm. else, it was not as ideal. <laughs> yep, yes. I, yeah. I totally get that. <laughs> and so now you are in Montreal and uh, what is facing this window? Uh, so this is facing um, southwest. Okay. So I get a ton of bright, direct sunlight um, during the summer. Obviously in the winter, it's very gray here. Um, it's very cloudy. So I have, you can tell behind me, I have a ton of artificial light to supplement. Okay. Um, but in the summer, it does get extremely bright. So bright, actually, that it kind of burns some of the leaves occasionally of the okay. nepenthes. Um, so uh, sometimes I'll hang a cloth to protect them if it gets really extended sun. Um, but generally, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what temperature do you have inside uh, the windowsill? Like on the windowsill, temperature... Uh, day yeah. and night, do you know the swing? I have, so it is fairly consistent. I keep it about the same in the winter, at least. Uh -huh. uh, so right now, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. It's 20. Celsius, okay. With 62% humidity okay. right now. 14.7 uh, during night. Well, that was a little bit ago. I think okay. that was before I turned on the heat. Okay. Um, so in the winter, my swing is probably only about one degree. Okay. Um, so but during the summer, it would be a lot more. Um, I'm, I just have the windows open, so it's whatever the annual swing is, um, which can be, you know, as much as twenty degrees some days. Okay. Um, so it, it it varies a lot from season to season. <laughs> yeah, totally. And uh, what about the humidity? What do uh, humidity? You yeah. So. It, it's going up just because of I'm holding it right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's usually, I try to keep it around 60. Uh, it has gone as low as about 40, but I do have a humidifier that I run almost every night. Um, and then in the daytime with the sun coming in, it tends to dry out a little bit and then I'll boost it again in the evening. Okay. Um, so I, I do find it helps a little bit, but it's... Uh, it's not, you know, it's not too crazy, but it is on the wetter side of like an ambient home, I would think. Okay. What is uh, behind you, Planza Hut? Yes, Planza Hut is the name of my business. Um, oh, nice. So, yeah, I actually have my own business where I sell carnivorous plants. Okay. Um, so a lot of them are grown just right here. Uh, <laughs> this is my nursery. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it, it starts. Yeah, it's a small start, um, but I like to do a lot of markets. I do um, mm -hmm. lots of plant markets in Toronto still. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually run a plant market um, called Hungry for Love. It's mm -hmm. a carnivorous plant market. 
nice. in Toronto, and we're going to be having it this year on February 11th. Um, so we're really excited about that. I just get together as many carnivorous plant people as I can, and I have everybody bring whatever they want to sell, whatever they have too many of. And so it's a fair. It is, yeah, yeah, it's completely nice. open to the public as well. And entrance is free, um, so nice. we really love to share the hobby because it's been, you know, it, it's a little bit hard to find these plants, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to make them more accessible. Um, so that's that's our goal, anyway. And uh, yeah, it'll be our our third time mm -hmm. running the market uh, and second year for it. So it it's really fun and and we love meeting new people who are interested in carnivorous plants and introducing people to them um it's it's really a a, a what is the word for it a love a passion all of these things <laughs> so um can you show us your plants and Absolutely. uh Yes. Yeah. Tell us what uh, grows better or uh, is still adapting. Like uh, I let you uh, guide us. Okay. So yeah, like I mentioned, a lot of stuff is still adapting. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of it is doing quite well. We've got some new little pictures going on some of these. Um, so these, this is how I grow most of the ones in the windowsill. I actually just keep them in these um plastic bins yeah and i find it helps a bit with the humidity and so you have water on the uh i do have bottom? a bit um okay. i do let it dry out regularly yeah. but yes right now i do have a little bit of water in there okay. um but they're just uh they're in different media as well so these ones are in sphagnum uh -huh. i do actually have these ones in heat please don't hate me <laughs> 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 I honestly, these are the ones that I'm selling. So the less I have to take care of them, the better. <laughs> I get that. So I do have them in peat only because it keeps them moist for a really long time. And mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about them. So um, these ones, yeah, I need to show you this new picture that just opened. It's absolutely beautiful. Nice. What is so it? it? This is uh, Ventricosa by Truncata Stripe. Nice. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. So I've got a few. Did you made the cross yourself? Oh, no, I didn't. I wish. <laughs> This one I got from a local nursery. Um, they're called uh, Crystal Star Nursery. Hmm, I don't know this one. They're in Toronto. Well, they're not quite in Toronto, but they're north of Toronto. And they have a few Nepenthes and Pinguicula and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, this one, I'm trying to get the light right here. There we go. That one's nicer. Yeah, the truncata make it definitely bigger. Yeah, for sure. It's quite nice. So I'm, I'm very happy about these guys. They're settling in quite well, mm -hmm. even though they're in these little tiny pots. <laughs> it seems kind of sad, but they seem to be fine. So well, yeah, as if they I are picturing, they are fine. Exactly. Yeah. So... Uh, that's some of the ones that I'm selling. Now, my personal collection is some down here. So these ones, I have a lot of water in the bottom of the bin right now, yeah. um, just because I watered them a couple of days ago. Um, but these guys are all kind of struggling along. I have a lot of sun stress on this. This is Miranda. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if she has a picture right now. Oh, she's got one coming. Okay. Kind of guy. <laughs> um, but I have some, what, this Gaia over here, which uh -huh. is making some nice ones. This one I actually got off a friend of yours, Andrew. Oh. Sticky Leaves. He, uh, he was nice enough to give me this one. So she's doing pretty well. She's got a couple of pictures. Uh -huh. She's still adapting, but that's all right. Um, I've got, uh, what is this here? This one is one that I struggle with a lot. This is Ventricosa by Peltada. 
Huh. And this guy, I find, only makes pictures when there's a good temperature swing. It seems to like a lot of cool evenings. So I'm surprised right now that it's got this picture and it's got another one coming even. That's so nice. quite a nice surprise there. <laughs> good um, to know. Yeah, yeah. This one, it's, yeah, it's definitely trickier for the windowsill, I would say. Um, okay. And it likes higher humidity too. So again, I'm quite shocked that it's okay right now, but we're adapting to each other nicely, I think. <laughs> um, this is a, an Ampularia here. Unfortunately, this picture is getting a bit old. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can see that really well, but... Um, it's okay. That's one that I also have in an Ikea greenhouse. I have a similar variety. Um, so we can check that out a little bit later and I can show you uh -huh. the difference. This one is a little bit smaller and, and struggling a little bit more, but seems fairly okay. Just a little bit slower growing. And um, let's see, what else do I have to show you here? Um, there's some of these. These ones are not doing very well. These were an import that I did from... Um, crabby carnivores and oh, okay, yeah yeah they're they're struggling they're not pitching they haven't pitched since i got them well actually hold on we're starting yeah how long <laughs> do you had uh, these, these ones these ones i've had for probably about oh let's see here i think i ordered these back in march okay or so maybe Oh no, you know what? I think it was the fall. So probably September or so. Yeah, that's their uh, first of last winter, year. So. Of last year. Yeah. They're not doing very well. I don't know. I'm kind of uh and at what a lot. Are they? <laughs> um a lot of them are just um Vikings. Okay. I have quite a few different kinds of Vikings okay. in here. Um yeah. I think I have, oh, oh, there's one little picture. There we go. Okay. All right. It's adapting. Who's this from? That's a basil on another. Mirabilis yeah, Lubosa. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they are kind of a lowlander. So no surprise. They, I, I think they will just uh, start being great at spring when it's warmer. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. Miranda was not happy on my window seal. Oh, really? Yeah, it's too hmm. cold. Uh, he didn't like it. Oh, you mean Mirabilis? No, uh, Mirabilis, sorry. Mirabilis. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, Miranda, I couldn't find okay. it. It's nowhere. Oh, no. No, oh, there is no. no Miranda in Winnipeg. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. I do have one here. I got this ages ago. And it... I had a huge one. This is actually a basil from it, and I gave it to a friend. Um, <laughs> I, I wish I would have known I would have saved you a basil. I will finally find that one day, probably. Oh, I know. Uh, but, I uh, know you will. But if I if I do get a basil anytime soon, I'll be sure to let you know. Because I you. do go to Winnipeg regularly, actually, so I could easily bring it to you. <laughs> Well, next time you come, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And now these are the big ones up here. <laughs> so these guys are, let's see, I have. Um, yes. So this one's really cool because it's got this nice little low eye shape to it. And it's actually got a couple of hairs on the top lid of some of them. Can yeah. you see those? So I'm quite happy with this one. It's got some nice big pictures. Yes. It, you know, it's adapting. Okay. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we're but losing. Yeah. yeah, like this is, this is unfortunate here. I think that little guy is not quite gonna make it, but we're adapting, we're adapting. <laughs> Um, and then I have this guy, which I'm really, really in love with. It's got this crinkly leaf. This is yeah. Mirabilis by Glavosa by Ampularia 
Black Magic, I believe it is. Black Miracle, I believe. Black Miracle, okay. There's a Black Magic Orchid, so I always get the two confused. <laughs> so the plant is underwater, the submerged, right? So this Half is way. my trick here. This is how I grow all of these guys that are in these bigger pots. Uh -huh. This is actually a self-watering system. So you can oh. see it really well here. Um, what I do is I have a plastic pot that the plant is actually in, and uh -huh. then I have strings that go into the water. So because I just watered it, it is sitting in water. It'll only be like that for a day or two though. It'll come down pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it just has water in the reservoir at the bottom, which basically allows, let me just pull this out. The roots. It allows the roots to grow into the reservoir, but it also maintains a good amount of humidity or like dampness without being yeah. wet, right? So nice. I have the strings and I have the roots coming out and honestly, they seem fine with it. Like yeah. everybody always says, don't put your nepenthes in standing water, but I don't know. They kind of like this water. I, I know it's really gross looking. There's lots no. of algae in it, but. <laughs> but lowlander but... Uh, don't mind uh, being, uh, having the roots submerge. Uh... Yeah, they seem to love it actually. So this is what I use for all of my bigger ones. Mm -hmm. um, so I have this guy in the same sort of setup. Okay. You can see the strings at okay. the bottom there, and then there's water in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And this guy as well, this is uh, Rebecca Soper. Oh, okay. So this one is a, a pretty popular hybrid, um, but I really love it because it's so bushy, <laughs> right? It makes so many basils and they are very dense and it hasn't started vining yet, so the distance between the, mm -hmm. the leaves is really compact, which is lovely. And it makes these gorgeous big purple pitchers. I haven't been giving it as much light here, so now the pitchers are looking more like this. Mm -hmm. But they're still cute. <laughs> and so this one, again, is in that self-watering system. I like the I just, ah, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> A little bit of fun with that one. Okay. <laughs> so this is again the plastic pot okay. and the strings going into the water. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it it works really well for me. This is the way that I'm able to keep them alive. Because <laughs> otherwise it is a lot of watering that I don't often do. Okay. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's the ones that are in here. Now, if you want, I can bring you over to the greenhouse. Uh, let's talk about the lights that you Absolutely. use here. Yes, wonderful. So this is just an LED panel. Um, it's similar to a Yescom. Okay. It, it's fairly inexpensive. I just got them on Amazon, I think, okay. for I think uh, two for 40 bucks. Now, that was pre-pandemic, so... Okay. They're probably a bit more now, but uh, these are lovely. They throw a ton of light. Um, okay. I find the ones up here, these guys are probably getting about, what is it? I think it's 3,000 lux or okay. 4,000. So okay. it, it's a good amount. Um, and then I also have these barina lights down here mm. too. Okay. So these are just the two foot Marina LED grow lights, and I have two on each shelf. So depending on what I'm growing here, I might put both of them on, but for the Nepenthes, I find one is even maybe a bit too much. Okay. <laughs> so these guys, they seem to be okay right now, but I have noticed sometimes this happens to the leaf. Okay. So I think it it's a bit bright for them, but I have them very, very close to the light, yeah, right? That's why. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one's a little bit better where they're a bit farther. This goes all the way down to here. So they've got much more room. So I love these lights, to be honest. They're also fairly inexpensive. You can get, I think they come in a pack of six, maybe. Okay. And I think they're about $80. 
Um, so they're pretty easy. They're not as stylish as some grow lamps. They do have these little electrical cords that you have to connect to one another. But when you have a, a, a shelving unit, for example, like this, um, it becomes quite easy because you can just string them all together. Yeah. yeah. So I like them quite a bit, actually. Okay, nice. So Thanks. you you have a, an IKEA cabinet, you said. The, the... I do, yes. It's in the other room. So and is it the same species? I do have this Ampularia, or, well, I have Ampularias in there. So to remind you, this is what this one looks like here. Mm -hmm. So it's got one tiny picture that's about to go, actually. Um, and it's... It's, it's stopping, yes. Yeah, it's not doing as well as I would hope, but it looks like it's starting to make mm -hmm. another new one here, which is yeah. good. Um, so I have a similar one to this that I'll show you in the IKEA cabinet. Nice. Not bad, eh? Yeah. So you can see here, my main passion is the pinguiculas, uh, but I do have some really lovely nepenthes here as well. So this is two ampularias in here. Let me just open this up. Hopefully you can still hear me over the sound of a fan. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Good, okay. So this is one of the ampularias. This one is a Black Miracle Cross as well. Oh no, it's faded. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I'll have to get back to you with the name of this one. Um, yeah. that, uh... <laughs> oh dear, okay. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I have um, impact that also fade on the... <laughs> yeah, oh geez. It happens so quickly sometimes, eh? So this is one of the Ampularias. This one, it had an incredible leaf jump mm -hmm. on the last one. So I'm very excited about this. It is starting to vine also, which I'm not as excited about. <laughs> because that means you it'll take up more room. Don't tell them. That's true, actually. I should do cuttings, but... <laughs> It's doing very, very well. Okay. I'm uh, I'm very happy with it. It started actually making a couple of little pictures inside there. I don't know if you can quite see yeah. that, but they're just hiding under the leaf. This is a classic ampullaria moment. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, and you will you will find a, a basil uh, when yeah, the, when, um, that's when you do the cutting actually. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. So I'm. It might be time then. <laughs> Check if you have a basil. Don't cut everything. Don't no, no. Trust me, but if you you do have like that's that's great. It will have the time I to recover it, it before might. spring. Exactly. Oh yeah, I've got another little one back okay, here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's and like stop dressing, yeah. like sphagnum. Under that, yeah. do you remember what it is? Um, I don't know this live sphagnum. I actually was lucky enough to have it just sprout from uh, a bag of dead sphagnum that i had hmm. bought so i don't know the kind but so do you know under that right. it's uh dead sphagnum moss and something or yes. yeah so i have it in the same setup oh, with the water yeah. at the bottom and the root hmm. coming in let me just pull it out of the pot okay there. i need to edit this part here <laughs> This one's a bit trickier to get out. Yeah, okay. don't uh, don't bother. Oh no, I got it now. Okay. So that okay. it. So I have the strings at the bottom, and the roots are coming in as well, okay. and they're just growing in that water at the bottom there. And so this container, yes, it has a mix of sphagnum, perlite, and orchiata, okay. and then the live sphagnum is just on top of that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. nice. I'm quite happy here. So I'm very happy as well. It's a good little plant. <laughs> uh, and then I have another Ampularia back here as well. This one's probably going to be faded too. Yeah, you can just barely see Krabby's logo on there. <laughs> oh dear. All right, I'll, I'll get back to you with the name of that one as well. Um, but this one is in the same sort of situation uh -huh. here with the water at the bottom and the strings. And again, seems to be doing well. 
Um, I have a new little picture coming here. Sorry, this little air plant is going into the frame. There we go. Um, so this guy is doing a tiny leaf jump right now. This is the newest leaf with a little picture up there. A tiny one starting. And this is another um, Black Miracle hybrid. I really like the dark ones. <laughs> so the the black plants are kind of my my favorite. Okay. Nice little guy there. And then I have one more Amphilaria in here hidden amongst the orchids. This guy should still have a legible tag. So this is another Viking, Mirabilis var globosa by Amphilaria Green by Black Miracle. All right, you grow right. orchid too. I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got this is vanilla and there's Chlorothallis back here and some Lepenthes as well. Jewel orchids, there's all kinds of orchids in here. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, but what this temperature do you have inside this cabinet? So Usually, now it's right, open, but yeah, right now it's open, so the humidity is gonna be dropping significantly. Yeah. But the 21 is about right for during the day. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably 21, 22 ish up to 22, and then at night, probably down to about 19. Uh -huh. um, and then the relative humidity, again, is super low right now because the doors are open, uh -huh, sure. uh, but it tends to be around 80, um, 85 sometimes. Mm -hmm. If I've watered that day, it goes all the way up to 100. Um, <laughs> so it is very, very wet, and that's why I have a ton of fans in here. I have a total of six fans okay. and they're all just kind of hiding around. So I've got lots of here pings. as well. Nice. All the pings, yeah, these are my pride and joy. These guys are the main part of my hobby here. Um, but they're they're a little bit different than the ping or than the uh, Nepenthes. I also have sundews down here and some utricularia at the front. So in various stages of happiness, <laughs> again, oh, yeah, with the move, some of them are going to sleep and others are not. This is a neat one I got from Sticky Leaves there. One is completely dormant and one's awake <laughs> in the same pot, of course. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. So back to the Nepenthes, this guy has one little picture on him but making some more. So this one, I moved into the cabinet um, about three months ago. So this one was out with the other ones in the other room before. Mm -hmm. And you can see the leaves were pretty tiny. It wasn't really wavy at all. Um, so I have found it's definitely a lot happier in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, but it is possible to grow on a windowsill. It'll just be slower and smaller but that's okay if that's all you have that's still gonna work that i have one more that i can show you as well that's kind of in the windowsill situation too so this one is over here where that light is whoops this is the only problem with the bigger leaves see <laughs> i have to make sure i tuck them in <laughs> there we go all right all safe <laughs> Okay, so this guy over here is growing in between two large windows. And the reason for that is that this is a door, of course. Yeah. And this other one has this monstrous electric heat. Okay. <laughs> so I had to move it to the other side just to avoid the heat. Um, but this, I believe, is a spatulata. Okay. It was sold to me without an ID, so I'm not totally 100% on that, um, but I think that's what it is. It's a little bit fuzzy, and it does stay this pale green. Um, okay. So this guy has a lot of sun stress because this light is very, very close as well. Mm -hmm. This is, I believe... Uh, it's sunsy. Oh, no, sunsy. Yes, it's yes. just upside down. Okay, it's a sunsy bulb. Apologies. <laughs> So this is a bit too close, I would say, for most uh -huh. uh, yeah. most of them. Like it is burning a little bit, um, but this one, 
this one is recovering right now from being burnt from that heater. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I had it in the actual window before and I lost about more than half of the plant oh. just from the heat. It cooked it overnight. So this is the first time I've had electric heating since I was a teenager. So <laughs> I did not think about it. Um, but it's it's coming back slowly. I still have a few pictures. Uh -huh. So I'm trying really hard to keep these happy and healthy. They're they're dying a little bit, but hopefully I've it's fed winter. them enough. It is winter, but hopefully I've fed them enough that they'll make some more. Uh -huh. Do you have a little bit of new growth now, which is nice to see. Um, and I also have one vine that survived. So this vine, please excuse the monstera here but this vine up here uh -huh. is that same nepenthes so one of them survived i had two before and it looks like it's putting out new growth which is great nice. so unfortunately these haven't ever pictured for me um they always dry up it seems i had one almost so yeah. close but during winter <laughs> is normal Especially yeah. when you live in cold climate. Me too. Yeah. Some species would just stop until spring. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. So hopefully some of these will stay viable enough to come in mm -hmm. in the spring. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh it's been a rough year for this guy. <laughs> um, but this one is also in a self-watering system. So I have the large pot mm -hmm. and then I have the water inside with mm -hmm. the plastic pot there. So he again is is enjoying this, I think, pretty well. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move this light back, I think, a little bit more, just because we've got a lot of really dark leaves happening. But otherwise, I think it's going okay. Mm -hmm. And this is in a, it's northeast facing. So it does get a little bit of light in the morning um, but it is mostly this bulb that it gets light from. So I have uh, one last question. If you would have uh, an advice for somebody that wants to start growing the Pentes on the Windows mm. team, what would it be? I think my main advice would be to do research mm -hmm. and find a Nepenthes that is easy to grow on a windowsill. I think a lot of us want to dive in head first and get the really, really beautiful, fancy ones, but those ones often will not be happy on your windowsill mm. and then you won't want to continue because you'll unfortunately had a bad experience. So I think it's really important to start with something easy, something that's more adaptable. Um, I love the Rebecca Soper, for example, mm -hmm. the Ventricosa, or Loei by Ventricosa Red, that one's really adaptable as well. Uh, Ventrata, something like that is going to be a little bit more adaptable, I find at least here. Maybe it's not the case for everywhere, but in in Montreal and Toronto, these are the ones that I recommend to people. And, and I do often recommend a little bit of supplemental light for the winter yeah. as well. Same as what you've experienced with your windowsill. It just is so dark in the northern hemisphere in the winter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically the main points, I think. Just make sure you do some research and choose some easy ones to start with. And then you can work up to the hard ones, mm -hmm. right? It's, uh, it, it's something I'm in the process of doing. You can see I have, you know, various stages of the easy ones doing really, really well and the harder ones doing okay. And I think that's normal. That's part of growing with this hobby. Thank you very much for sharing all this uh, with us. Thank and, you so um, much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yes, me too. And uh, so um, if anybody has a question, they can contact you on Instagram, Absolutely. I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, Instagram is the easiest way to get a hold of me. I am at plant the hut. Up okay. here, or you can see it over here as well. Okay. Oops, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the it's hard to do speaking. this backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so at Plants the Hut is where you can find me. Okay. 
I'm uh, I'm always excited to chat with people about carnivorous plants. So please do reach out if you have any questions at all. Okay, thank you very much and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much. You too, Amy. It's thank been a you. pleasure meeting you. Just letting you know, I won't publish in the next six months. It's impossible. I need to work on something important for the future of my family. And uh, sometime you have to do what you have to do. Uh, that's it, guys. Um, uh, have a great uh, day and uh, until next time, happy growing.